I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Brooklinen. It's been a while since I have taken you on a good old fashioned day in the life video. I had a different video plan today, but it seems like it's going to be too hard to do with what we have going on. So I'm just going to take you along with our busy day. So this morning we had leftover egg casserole. I didn't actually film that, but we've been eating eggs at every single meal because our chickens are laying like two dozen a day right now with the light and spring. So we just had that leftover. We've been working on homeschool math all morning long. That's typically what we do in the morning. And now Luke took the two boys that need their reading lessons aside and we're gonna give them their space for that. And I'm gonna take the older kids into town to pick up a few things for what we're doing for the rest of the day. I put a whole chicken in the oven. I just drizzled it with some olive oil and sprinkled it with some Ballerina Farm seasoning and salt. My podcast manager, Leanne, actually sent me the seasoning as a gift because the podcast just hit 2 million downloads. So that was super sweet. We're gonna enjoy it today on this chicken. And then I put in a whole bag of sweet potatoes on the top rack of the oven. This is what I do when I have a lot going on. I get something going really early. So that way I can just go about my day and not worry about lunch. Chicken and sweet potatoes or baked potatoes is about the easiest possible thing for that type of day where you just wanna get something in the oven, forget about it. It's easier than throwing in a pizza in my opinion. I might steam some vegetables later, probably serve it with sauerkraut. That's probably what we'll do. Instead of vegetables, I'll probably just serve it with sauerkraut. Super easy. We actually have guests coming in town this coming Tuesday. So when this video goes out, that'll already be in the past, but I, even though we made the guest cottage fully ready on the last video, there's just a few more things that I want to do. Just those final touches that you really want to do when a guest actually comes. So I want to spruce it up with some sheets on the bed. I want to get some fresh flowers, maybe a few snacks to put on the table, maybe some drinks for the refrigerator. So we're going to head to town, pick up some of that. And then this afternoon, I'm actually going to be doing some of that sprucing up in the cottage, take you along with me. I'm sure we will be making dinner, so I will take you along with that. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna make. I have a whole bunch of meat thawing out in the refrigerator, and so I know that I'll have plenty of options, which is my number one tip. Just get a whole bunch of meat at the beginning of the week in the refrigerator, then you have options all week. You don't even have to plan. All right, so join me and see where this day takes us. first ever nap down. He's only right at about six months and I always do this around six months. It's a question I get a lot from followers because they know I, I wear my babies for so long. How do I eventually transition them to naps? And honestly, I don't even remember how it goes. It's always, I know it's always around six months, but it's based on just the child and how it's going. So some kids, I've, I've worn a little bit longer for their naps, some maybe a little bit less, but always there's a time where they start to get really restless, they don't nap as well. Whenever they take their naps, they only nap for maybe like a half hour or an hour. That's when you know that they need to start being laid down. And sometimes there's fussing. Today there wasn't, which I just got him down literally minutes ago, so we'll see. Maybe he'll nap for five minutes and then need me to go back in there but we're starting. So I actually got the pack and play out and 
he has now been officially introduced to it. Now I'll still be close sleeping all night, but I will likely now that I'm getting him into the habit or hopefully, we'll see how this goes. I feel like I'm going to just have to experiment and see if this actually works out well. But at night I will lay him down for bed probably around seven because those early bedtimes really help if babies get overtired, that's where things go wrong. And then if he wakes up at like nine or 10, I'll bring him in bed with me at that first waking. But I am attempting to start to teach him to sleep down, which I'm honestly really ready for. So here's to a nap longer than 10 minutes. Okay, so I have my afternoon cup of coffee and I'm going to make a couple of flower arrangements. We are, like I said, expecting guests here on Tuesday. So this morning when we went to town, we picked up flowers, we picked up some granola. I'm gonna put some of our raw milk in the little fridge and some bowls and spoons. And then we also are stocked with coffee and we picked up Izzy's and seltzer waters. So some sort of like healthier type of treats. This is really fun for us because it's our first time being able to use our guest cottage. And I'm also gonna go in there and make the bed really pretty with some comfy new sheets. I wanna say thank you to today's video sponsor, Brooklinen. Brooklinen is having their annual birthday sale. It runs from April 26th through May 4th, which is their biggest sale of the year. Everything is 20% off. Brooklinen sheets are tried and true. They have over 35,000 five-star reviews, more than any other online bedding company, and over half a million happy sleepers. You can mix and match over 20 colors and patterns, so allowing you to decorate however you choose. Like for example, in this cottage, I wanted something bright and sunny and inviting, and I was able to recreate that where sometimes I'm looking for a more neutral color palette. They have every different style and color. Now for our guest cottage that I told you about that we're gonna make into the most lovely little place for someone to stay this coming week, I wanted to spruce up the bedding. This is the first time that we're actually gonna have someone stay since we've created this into a guest cottage. And so I really wanted it to be very inviting and I also wanted it to have a cheerful summer vibe. I chose the linen hardcore sheet bundle in a sunny yellow. I love the breathable texture of linen. It's perfect for hot summer days, which are ahead. We don't actually have AC in the cottage now. We'll have to get some because whenever it gets really hot, nobody's gonna enjoy that, but it's breathable. Now with the hardcore bundle, instead of buying individual items, you can actually save 25% by purchasing them that way. It comes with the core sheet set, so the fitted sheet, the flat sheet, extra pillowcases and a duvet cover. You can actually mix and match colors. So I went with sunny colored sheets and then I did the bright white duvet, which I always like that little contrast. Personally, I love Brooklyn and sheets. I love the cozy texture of linen. It looks so perfect in farmhouse or cottage decor because it's crinkly and textured not too perfect, a little bit wrinkly, but in the most charming way. Make sure to check out the link in the description box below to get in on Brooklinen's birthday sale. Again, you can get that from April 26th through May 4th.
All right, we have baseball practice tonight, so I'm going to get some dinner going. My camera's out of focus here. I'm gonna do breakfast for dinner. I'm gonna make some sourdough biscuits, sausage gravy, and eggs. So that way we can use up more eggs. We have so many eggs. If you're wondering how the nap went, he slept for about 30 minutes at the most, but at least we got him in his pack and play for the first time. So that's a start. People are always asking me questions about this and you think I'd have it more figured out, but honestly, with each kid, I'm just figuring it out. And it, the one tip I'll give to you if you're trying to figure this all out with your child is to not stress it. They will sleep eventually. So if you feel like I'm never gonna get this child to nap down, you will, and it's a season that passes, and so if you have to put them in your app and then do the, the pack and play, it's really not a big deal. So that's just my little bit of encouragement, but now I'm gonna make dinner so that way we can get going to baseball practice. Today I just eyeballed the flour and the milk, salt, all of that to taste. I do have an actual recipe over on the blog, farmasamu.com. So if you just search biscuits and gravy, you'll see it. I also have the sourdough biscuits on there. There's a long fermented version of the biscuits. Today I just used some sourdough starter. I did not ferment them because I did not think ahead, but it all turned out very delicious. shooting a project next week in regards to fermenting and so I want to have several things prepped and also my kids just love pickles. So this is something that'll be really good in the summer when you have a lot of cucumbers. So I created a brine by dissolving in some hot water two tablespoons of salt. Now I do two tablespoons of salt for a quart of water for, for a half gallon to make this cool so that I don't kill any of the good bacteria in my pickles. I'm going to add some ice to this, set it aside. Basically, I just want this close to full, so that's two tablespoons per quart. And I'm just gonna cut up my pickles, pack them in a jar, pour the brine over, put a weight on so they stay underneath the brine, and then just allow them to sit until they're nice and tangy. This should take about a week. Now, I'm also going to put in bay leaves for tannins. Now, this just helps pickles to be more crispy. You can use a lot of things for tannins. But the one thing that I actually have access to right now 
is bay leaves. So that's what I'm gonna use today. I'm just gonna pack some of these in with them and then hopefully they'll be nice and crispy.